Time to flex those muscles and get things rocking in Fort Collins, Colorado today. Wyoming and Colorado State playing for the bronze boot. It's the 101st Border War. The Rams and the Cowboys. Who wants it more? We're about to find out next. the greatest trophies in all of college football's rivalry games. The bronze boot at stake today here in Fort Collins, Colorado, as the Cowboys and Rams get set to get it on. Well, greetings, everybody. Hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I'm James Bates, and we've got a great one for you today on the mountain. Steve Fairchild, the head coach of these Rams, has been a part of this rivalry as a player, an assistant coach, and last year in his first year as a head coach, he and his guys got win number six up in Laramie to go bowling. Now the tables are turned. First-year head coach for Wyoming, Dave Christensen, really needs a big win, win number six, and to become bowl eligible for the Wyoming Cowboys today. I'm joined, as always, by my man Todd Christensen, a team in Wyoming, Todd, was picked to finish ninth at the beginning of the year. And that put a chip on their shoulders throughout this season as Dave Christensen reminded them that they were last, at least prognosticated to be last. Now they have an opportunity to win and go to a bowl game. Postseason would be tremendous. On the other side, Colorado State started the season well, 3-0, and but had eight straight losses. They do not want to take that losing streak into 2010, hence the reason why they're motivated to procure the bronze boot. 60 degrees and sunny. We've got a beautiful day today. Enjoying it on the Wyoming sidelines is Natalie Vickers. That's right, James. You mentioned it. Uh, it is a gorgeous day. Wyoming fans, you can see behind me, showed up in droves to support their team, bring some excitement, and they did just that about 30 minutes prior to kickoff here at the 50-yard line. Well, the Wyoming uh, players got a little mouthy with the CSU players. They responded. There became a stare down, jumping up and down. The excitement is in the air. We're ready for the border war. Roger Bailey is on CSU's sideline. Roger, what do you got? Well, Natalie, emotions are running high for various reasons. One, you've got the emotions of the, the rivalry, and it is senior day here at CSU. Talking with Larry Kerr, the defensive coordinator for CSU, it has not been a morgue type of environment over here this past week. When asked uh, Steve Fairchild about what his – emotions are for this game he said we're going to strap it on and we're going to play like hell James and Todd I'm expecting the same out of you two guys in the booth ah that's exactly what you're going to get Roger you better believe it Wyoming and Colorado State opening kickoff when we return here to Fort Collins Colorado college football on the mountain is brought to you by Dodge live life to the fullest Dodge, grab life. By St. George, Utah. Discover St. George at adazion.com. By the United States Marine Corps, the few, the proud, the Marines. And by the Wyoming Department of Transportation. Why dot reminds you bus driving is drunk driving. Always designate a sober driver. Well, there, the series history and these two schools can't agree on anything. Wyoming calls it the 101st meeting. Colorado State, though, calls it the 100th meeting. The first game ended in a forfeit. And three straight wins for Colorado State. Dave Christensen, his first taste of this great rivalry after spending eight seasons at the University of Missouri, most of those as an offensive coordinator. He's been in some big rivalry games, and we told you, a player, an assistant coach, and now a head coach in his second season. And a big part of this rivalry series, Steve Fairchild, longtime NFL offensive coordinator, most recently with the NFL's Buffalo Bills, Vandermolen set to get things going here in the 101st meeting of Wyoming and Colorado State in the Border War. 2009 is on. Gibson for Wyoming will bring it back up near the 30-yard line. And that's where true freshman Austin, Austin Carter Samuels will start things off for his Wyoming Cowboys. Six foot two, 210 pounder from San Jose, California. Play 
action pass for Carter Samuels goes right down the middle intended receiver was Chris McNeil and thrown into traffic and broken up big offensive line led by the center from Westminster Colorado one of 26 Coloradoans on this team Russ Arnold Brandon Stewart a receiver when he came in outstanding high school running back now running the rock for the Cowboys number 22 so second down and 10 for the Wyoming offense four wide receivers the blitz off the edge and getting rid of the ball for a gain of about five before Colorado State brings him down. Let's take a look at that starting defensive lineup for the Rams. Guy Miller and James Moorhead have been very big inside. Alex Williams gets the start and James Skelton alongside Michael Sisson and Travis Ford's first career start. The junior from Highlands Ranch, Colorado and the safety. And it looks like Guy Miller may have come across too early. A third down and seven. You can see on the sidelines. Steve Fairchild is frustration. You know, physical issues are one thing, mental or another, third and seven. Not to mention the fact that as a nose tackle, it's unlikely that you're going to get a big pass rush anyway. You can see how annoyed that the head man is over something like that as the defense played so well in the first two downs and now a very makeable third and about two lengths of a football. To the ground go the pokes and the handoff is to the true freshman from Houston Texas Alvester Alexander and it will be a first down as the chains move Michael Sisson on the stop. It's an interesting approach that I've noticed here early on James in the first series by Larry Kerr the defensive coordinator. They've been coming from all angles. They had a they had a corner blitz. They had outside linebackers blitz and on that there was a run blitz there. They're going to force Carter Samuels to make plays and make plays down the field. Big wholesale shift left empty Austin Carter Samuels five wide receivers for the Pokes. Four man rush and the quick throw and upended is the receiver Zach Bolger but he does hang on. Nick Oppenier on the coverage. They need to look a lot worse than they are and that is that he gets his legs taken out from under him but he lands on the elbow and shoulder and he wants to bounce up quickly and let you know no problem I'm good. Bolger's reception goes six yards on second down and four. The handoff and a very short gain. It's Michael Sisson, the big playmaker on this defense, his second stop of the day. Michael Sisson has an interesting collection of statistics. When you have one player that leads your team in tackles, tackles for loss, sacks, and passes broken up, you've got a quality player. 13 and a half tackles for loss, a very significant statistic for the Duncanville, Texas native. Outstanding program there at Duncanville. The Panthers both in basketball and football. Can this Ram defense get a stop and get off the field here on the opening drive of the afternoon? There's the blitz coming from Williams. Quick throw where he vacated and it's a first down. David Leonard on the reception. Well into Ram territory. He mentioned at the top of the show James Travis Ford the new safety he's man for man with Leonard and that's a bit of a mismatch simply because Ford hasn't had enough experience. He's a safety primarily but he's the one that matched up with the leading receiver of Wyoming and on that play he came out second best. Stewart's the back. Orlando Arnold the tight end will stay in to block for Brandon Stewart. And Guy Miller in there in a hurry to pull Stewart backwards after a short game. One thing that my, Wyoming continues to do and needs to continue to do here early on is to continue to run the ball. They want to get this fast pace, but they need to establish something on the ground. They just do not want to be one dimensional and force Carter Samuels to make all the plays. Stewart behind the blocking of Jenho also in there Travis Bullcarper from his slot position and on second down and eight the Pokes get about four. That's good pursuit on the part of the linebacking group that looked for a brief moment there that Stewart had a big hole is going to cut to the outside and get some yardage but they close quickly to force a third and four. Arroyo signaling in 
the plays for his true freshman quarterback, former quarterback at San Jose State. Let's see what the folks have on third down and four yards to go. Look over the middle for Leonard. It's too strong throwing into the cornerback trailing Momo Thomas and the safety coming over the top was Elijah Blue Smith. So it's a fourth down and four yards to go for the Pokes. Well, they're going to they're go for it here simply because of the kind of a no man's land. But this is a great job by Elijah Blue Smith to anticipate he's going to the leading receiver from the safety position. The ball is overthrown. Colorado State had come with the blitz and now fourth and four. The clock is going to stop as Wyoming is going to take a timeout and talk it over. So first stoppage of the day on the opening drive of the day. Wyoming wants a timeout to talk over a fourth and four. We'll be back. The Mountain goes one on one with the prominent people in sports on a conversation with. Coming up, Bill Dolman sits down with Air Force football coach Troy Calhoun. Join the Falcons leader as he talks about his coaching career. The thing about the NFL were the challenges week in, week out. His road back to the academy. Where else can you get this in terms of that kind of camaraderie and that kind of morale? And life outside the game. Maybe in late February, early March. We might do a little bit of snow skiing now and then. A conversation with Monday at 7 on the Mountain. Welcome you back to Fort Collins. Let's check out our Dodge keys to the game, if you would, Todd. Find common ground. As I mentioned, they're going to have to run the ball a little bit to not be one-dimensional. Any explosive plays that they can get, 15 yards plus, Wyoming needs those. Three or four of those are going to find themselves in the postseason. Eastman Kodak moments. Yeah, that's right. The quarterback has to have some picture-perfect moments for Colorado State to win in riding time. Remember wrestling, the old college wrestling? If for whatever reason it's close, you want that team that has the time most. And Colorado State wants to do that with their running game and their stalwart offensive line. Needless to say, third down and especially fourth down conversions. A big key to this ball game, and we've got one early here. Opening drive. It's a fourth down and four for Wyoming at the Colorado State 35, and it's a Quick kick, not what you wanted, as this one will go into the end zone as they try to catch Colorado State off guard and pin them down deep. Instead, the Rams will take over at the 20 after the Austin Carter Samuels punt. They did catch them off guard, but the thing that's, that Carter Samuels did, which was just unwise, you've got nobody back there. You don't have to have any kind of a punt. I mean, that actually went into the end zone on the air. He needed to just drop that and let it roll. Unfortunate for Wyoming. Steve Fairchild admitted maybe last year his Rams overachieved a little bit going to a bowl of New Mexico Bowl champions in his first year and this year underachieving a little bit with Grant Stucker as the quarterback and making his first Division One FBS start John Eastman the transfer from Snow Junior College here comes John Mosher behind that big offensive line will get a heavy dose of that student body left that time behind the big guys up front. And while the record may not show it, this is one of the best offensive lines that has ever come through Fort Collins. Four seniors that Steve Fairchild says will all get a chance to play on Sundays. John Mosher, 27 rushes, 177 yards. The workhorse in the losing effort in Albuquerque last weekend. There's the junior from down in South Florida, Miami's Columbus High School outstanding program down in the Sunshine State, Zach Pong in motion will stay in to block. The blitz is there. Eastman stays in the pocket and he's dropped. Finally coming off the edge, one of the leading tacklers in the nation, Brian Hendricks, back from an ankle injury. We mentioned the ankle injury, James, over the last two weeks. He has been inactive, but number eight, averaging nearly 11 and a half tackles per game. The offensive line does a tremendous job. You can count for yourself. He's got five seconds, but as he rolls out, lacking the mobility, Hendricks able to track him down from behind. Set up a third and 15. Hendricks had 23 tackles earlier this year against the Air Force Academy, breaking a Wyoming record that had stood since 1972. Freck Erzinger's record of 21. So here's a third down and 15. Now the shovel pass to the freshman Lou Greenwood. Greenwood tries to get the edge, but 24 Chris Brzezinski. There to knock him out of bounds, well shy of that first down marker. Well, that's a, very difficult to find in your playbook, something that's going to come third and 15. So you go with the shovel pass, give the quarterback a little confidence, give Greenwood a chance to run, and give Conte Diacos a little bit more room to operate in terms of a punt. 
playing the field position game. Two outstanding young punters in this ball game. Here's the freshman from Countryside High School in Tarpon Springs, Florida, Pete Kondodiakis, to punt it away to David Leonard. And has to go back and will let that one drop. And the Rams will down it at the 22-yard line. A 42-yard punt for the freshman. Second chance today for the Pokes when we come back. In Colorado, sophomore linebacker Brian Hendricks, even missing the last two games, still comes in at number six in total tackles in the nation. Wyoming actually the only team in the nation when you throw in guys like Chris Brzezinski and Gabe Napton with three players in the top 25 in total tackles. Brzezinski ranks ninth in the nation and Napton Another sophomore linebacker, number 20. Beautiful day for football here in Fort Collins. No points on the board, though, 5.52 left to go in this first quarter. A lot of football to be played in the 101st meeting between these two schools. Here's Eastman, and he connects with Rayshon Greer, first down yardage. Let's get it down to Natalie Vickers. Guys, I found it interesting. Last week, I covered Wyoming as well, and Coach Christensen facing TCU had no disillusions about the game, and he even was looking ahead a bit to this game, and he said he just wanted to make sure that none of his players came into this game hurt. Of course, you know, Brian Hendricks is back, and the nose guard Alex Stover is back after five weeks of being out, but he was always focused on this game. You know how important this game is, of course, and always has known that he's going to be going to a bowl game. So he said, we just have to get a win. We're going to be there, no questions. Here's the counter action in the first look in a couple weeks. We've gotten of Leonard Mason, who flat out didn't practice hard enough leading into that New Mexico game last week and, and thus did not play. And it's unfortunate for Colorado State because John Mosier was, was sucking wind there at the end. I think that was a contributing factor as to why he fumbled there at a crucial juncture at the five-yard line. Mason is a little bit quicker. Has, you know, he's averaging five yards a carry. Remember earlier, James, we had a game against Utah where he put up 130 yards against a pretty stalwart defense. So evidently that's where you earn your playing time is on the practice field. And number two learned his lesson because now here he is early on in the game. And again, back to back on that counter OT look behind those big bodies. Weston Johnson wrestles Mason down just a yard shy of the first down marker. Mason came in when down with the concussion was John Mosier. This is a Colorado State team, Todd, that has missed 35 starts due to injuries. And Natalie hit on it. Wyoming has really remained healthy. And, and thus the five win season and a chance to go bowling with a win today but a third down and one here for John Eastman. And the Rams, eye backs behind Eastman, Ponga and Mason. The handoff is to Mason, a lot of room for him. Gets outside, a first down and a little bit more. Taken down up near the 40-yard line in Wyoming territory by Krasinski and Gibson. Wyoming decides to sell out inside, and Mason does a great job with his vision. Look at everybody selling out between the tackles, and he's able to cut to the outside. Look at Shelly Smith ahead of him, a great athlete, six foot four, 300 pounds, able to run downfield, be a shield for Krasinski with another tackle, but not where he'd like it. Way downfield and a first down for the Rams at the 40. New first and ten line. That first and ten line brought to you by the folks at Remax. The sign you want, the agent you need. Here they play action pass and not fooled. They're in a hurry. Big sack coming off the edge. Marcel Gibson, a cornerback blitz and minus ten yards on the play. Mason was a little bit slow off the play action. Watch number two of the play action. He needs to come back and get that blitzing corner, but he is unable to do it. He didn't have his number. Number two on number two. Well, number two for the whites, a little bit faster than number two for the greens, and as a result, a sack for the Cowboys. It's Marcel at one cornerback spot for the Cowboys, and his brother to Sean Gibson. The other cornerback starting for Wyoming today and playing against their cousin, Chris Gibson, a linebacker for the Rams. Here's another play pass. They set up the screen, throwing it back to Leonard. He had a big touchdown against New Mexico last week. This one could be coming back as a flag comes down and a nice play call, but it may be all for naught. You had Shelly Smith and Cole Pemberton sandwiching one of the defenders for Wyoming. 
And evidently one of them had a hold of him. Dave Epperly, our head referee and his crew here today. And Fort Collins and Steve Fairchild out there about well, one of the hash marks. One of the beefs that Steve that he has is, is the defender for Wyoming does a tremendous acting job. You're going to get a chance to see this when he throws back against the grain. Uh, you're not going to be you're not going to be able to see it there because that's the end of the play. But what happened what happened upfield is you had Pemberton and Shelley Smith sand, sandwiching the defender. The defender comes out and like he's drawing the charge. He falls down and Steve Fairchild unafraid all season long to give anybody in stripes an earful. Last year as well. Remember against BYU he was out there quite a bit. The Two man rush here on a second and very long. The Cowboys go safe, but it doesn't show on that play. They're in a hurry is Kenny Browder, the freshman from Round Rock, Texas. I gotta tell you, I'm really surprised. I would have anticipated maybe that's that's what it is. It's too predictable. Why isn't Colorado State saying, you know what, we're going on the ground until you stop us? And already it's about even run to pass here, which surprises me. I understand the element of surprise, but Bum Phillips was right in his old line about you dance, you know, you dance with who brung you. Without a doubt, bread and butter of this Ram offense has been the power game. More power than anybody in the Mountain West Conference. A four-man rush and the swing pass out to the fullback. And Zach Kaunga showing some good hands and some nifty feet. But on third down and 25, just puts a little dent in the yardage needed. Well, I'm surprised too, you know, James heading into this game, the two teams combined essentially to give up about 30 points a game. And I would have anticipated with the clock running and just a little more than one minute remaining in the quarter that the defense would have played, would have played, the defenses rather would have played as well as they have. But that's in the case, it's been a matter of field position here in the first quarter. We mentioned Larry Kerr, defensive coordinator for the Rams. Marty English, only carryover on the staff as the new head coach Dave Christensen comes in. This one angled out of bounds, but <laughs> not quite as deep as you would like if you're a Colorado State Ram fan. I'm sorry, I'm always amused by that. As if, so, as if the referee some 55 yards away is able to angle that exactly right. And Conadiakos isn't very happy with the mark because he's just a little bit short of getting an INS 20, which is what a punter wants, that inside the 20. Plenty of those back in high school. USA Today, All-American. And Dodiakis. But with a net less than 30 on that punt, Wyoming has to like their field position to 23. David Leonard. Big reception on the last drive. Here's another nice pickup on first down. Leonard gets 13, former Old Spice Kansas Player of the Year back at Shawnee Mission West High School. A little bit curious that you see the bottom of the screen there, Gerard Thomas. Now, David Leonard, as we mentioned, their leading receiver coming into this game with 64 catches, but he's been averaging nine yards a catch. Thomas has to get up on him. Number 33 isn't likely to run past him, but he gave him way too much of a cushion. goes to Alexander. He'll try to get to the edge behind big Clayton Curvin. Curvin throws him a block. But Elijah Bluesmith coming up from his safety spot to stop Alexander short of the first down. Well, as the quarter is about to end, if you're Wyoming, you have to be very happy with how you've run the ball up to this point. It's been a struggle for the Cowboys all season long, but the offensive line is doing a nice job. So scoreless after one here in Fort Collins. It's we'll be back with quarter number two after this. Touchdown catch presented by the CSU Bookstore and Rocky Mountain Collegiate. One of the band is in the race. All kinds of fun here in Fort Collins today. Even some suicide trombones courtesy of the Colorado State Band. Nobody into the end zone, though, as we've got goose eggs for both Wyoming and Colorado State, welcoming you back to colorful Colorado on a Black Friday, Friday afternoon on the mountain, and the 101st border war between the Rams and the Cowboys. A second down and three to start the second quarter of play for Austin Carter-Samuels. 
The freshman Alexander will join him in the backfield and take the handoff. Lowers his hat and will be enough for a first down. The sticks will move for the Cowboys. The offensive line for the Wyoming Cowboys, particularly Curvin on the right side and Kennedy and Arnold have done a nice job here, creating some holes early on for these Wyoming backs. As we mentioned, Alexander, the leading rusher, seven touchdowns on the season for number 32. 10 600 meter guy back in Houston. Rams show blitz as coming up and keeping the pressure on. That's 35 Ivory Heard, James Moorhead back there, the senior defensive tackle, as well, Nuku Latu. Well, Ivory Heard had, had an injury heading into this game, and that's the reason why Travis Ford started. But evidently, he's feeling a little bit better, and 5'11", 205, he arrives in a bad mood. He can hit you. Quick throw to Bolger, second catch of the day for Bolger. A short gain will bring up a third down and long for the freshman and the Cowboys. Maybe this is a feeling out period for defensive backs, but the reality is that Colorado State continues to be well off of these receivers. And collectively as a group, they've averaged 9.8 yards a catch. So you're not looking at a group that's blazing fast. D'Angelo Wilkinson injured will miss another game here today. Of course, Clint Kubiak, who hasn't been able to stay healthy throughout his career. The senior safety is missing the last half of this season. Here's your third down and six. They go over the middle, unable to hang on, is David Leonard. Had it in his hands, a nice looking throw by the freshman. Take Take a look at the arms of Leonard, and what I mean by that is that the difficulty of going over the middle, as he comes to the left, watch if they're shortened just a little bit. Yeah, see that? He's shortened just a little bit in anticipation of the hit. What he's trying to do is catch the ball and at the same time brace for the hit. And trying to do both, he was unable to do either. So the senior from Riverside, California, Dion Morton, who made a lot of big plays from the wide receiver spot in this rivalry last year. Will take it off the hop and try to scoot. Gets up across the 15-yard line before he's brought down by Chris Trzinski, one of many starters that are playing special teams today for the Wyoming Cowboys, or the Special Forces, as Dave Christensen likes to call the special teams units. Here one, here's one of the downsides that you have of this rugby-type punt. Watch what's going to happen. You're going to get right on it because he comes right into the rush. Look at this. Reserve running back. Michael Connor almost had a block punt right there. I, I, I got to tell you, you and I have debated this back and forth as to whether or not the rugby punt is a good thing. But if you've got a rush coming from the outside, you can't punt right into it. They're very fortunate to get that one off. Mosier, the lone back under center, goes Eastman. The counter play to the right, sniffing it out and smothering it. That Wyoming defense. No gain, and there is a late flag that comes down. Natalie Vickers mentioned off the top, these two teams really getting feisty in pregame warm-ups at midfield. And a little extracurricular activity here as the late flag is thrown. That's four like I kind of taunting. On the defense, number 36. 15 yards, resulting in a first down. Well, they cite Weston Johnson for that. You know what? what? What game are we playing? What game are we playing? Then put on flags, all right? Taunting. You believe that? I'm sorry. That's just me. It's Mitch Unrein. Look at a Mitch Unrein. I thought I heard him say 36, but regardless, I find it interesting in the midst of that sort of collision that if someone, you know, profanes or something, that, that's 15 yards. I, Okay, back to reality, sorry. Here's the play pass. Eastman, pressure in his face, and he loses the ball. Officials in there in a hurry, signaling second down. 
as Weston Johnson forced the fumble. It was Weston Johnson who the 15-yard penalty was called on, trying to make amends and doing it via the blitz. One of the things you notice that Eastman is unable to do is that this is this is the byproduct of not having many repetitions. You just don't have a feel for the rush. And as a result, the rush coming from both sides, as opposed to stepping up, he backs into what turns into a sack. It's, it's difficult. A game of this magnitude, a rivalry game, especially when you've had very little, if any, repetitions throughout the year, it's not like you can rectify it in one week. And number 12 is feeling the difficulty of that when you don't have a season-long feeling of being the main guy. In his first start, all first quarter numbers, the four for four. As Mr. Epperly asks for the game clock to be reset, we'll do just that at 12-14, remaining here in the first half. And living to play another down, this Colorado State offense, but going the wrong way. Here's a second down and 15 now. Good blocking up front, plenty of time, and connecting with Dion Morton, just a yard shy of the first down, a 14-yard pickup. Deion Morton does a tremendous job of driving Gibson off. Watch at the bottom. He's going to come down and make him look like he's coming upfield. Now he hits the brakes and comes to the outside. Gibson thinking that he's going to run the dig, which has been very popular for Colorado State this season. But he makes him look to the inside, cut back to the out. Great route by number 31. As you see the numbers that he procured last year in this big game, he was absolutely huge up in Laramie, James. A game that went well into the fourth quarter before finally coming away with that sixth win and becoming bowl eligible, these Rams. Paunga out of the backfield will have enough yardage for a first down. He's hit hard by Tashawn Gibson. But it will be a fresh set of downs for the guys in green and gold. Once again, I have to tell you, I'm a little bit confused. The dominating offensive line and running the football, you would anticipate if there's any team in the Mountain West Conference, let alone the nation, on third and one that you would think, we're going to give to our guy and we're going to run it, and they go with a play-action pass. One thing you do have to say about Steve Fairchild, he is not predictable. And here comes another late flag. This one's going to be a substitution penalty. Is on the defense. Five yard penalty, first down. Look like Tyson Leggett left the game a little too late. You mentioned Steve Fairchild, and he, he, although he's been calling, had, had his hand in the pot calling the offensive plays ever since stepping on campus, he has uh, officially taken over as the offensive coordinator of this Colorado State Ram team about midseason. And he did just that, of course, seven years in the NFL as an offensive coordinator. Here's the end around as they hand it off to the freshman and Lou Greenwood showing some scoots across the 45 yard line. Weston Johnson there on the stop, his fourth tackle of the day. Lou, Gr Lou Greenwood has what we have, football speed. A lot of guys can put on the shorts and run a great 40, but number 33 has football speed. He's gonna cross your face and come to your left. Last week took a took a circle route. Didn't even bother to go with, a, go with a move. Remember that, James? He was just so much faster than Carmen Masi. He just ran right past him. They're very excited about the future of number 33 and the big plays that he can produce. Oh, it was a big play. 50 yards yeah. there in Albuquerque last week for a touchdown. And, and you're right. He didn't even give a little bit of shake. It was just like he was running a 100-meter sprint. Here's Mosier. Mosier, when he gets an open field, he can let it go a little bit, too, across the 30-yard line. Big play for the Rammies. Down deep into Wyoming territory, a 25-yard pickup for the junior running back. Watch the right of your screen right here. Pemberton is gonna, going to get off, and you see that Walter drops his man, as does Martinez. That's your, that's your basic eye formation. Lead man 24, whatever you want to call it. But Mosier, as we talked about last week, has turned into the guy that they've been able to rely on. Big plays last week. You see a nice nice average per run thus far, and I'm surprised at this point, James, with 10 minutes remaining in the half, that he's only had three carries. Greenwood is the back. There's the swing pass as they try to set up a screen, and Lou Greenwood doing a great job of making the first would-be tackler miss, and a flag late. Is this one probably going to be a hold well down the field inside the 10-yard line? It's Just like a freshman, Lou Greenwood. Dion Morton is, is the culprit that's going to get caught, but Greenwood does a great job at the onset of the play in getting a chance to utilize his blockers. 
Watch him hesitate right here. He hesitates, comes back against the block, is able to bide his time between Martinez. You know what, James? Earlier in the season, he would not have been able to do that. I don't think he was disciplined enough. But now he understands, as we get the call, that the holding was indeed on Dion Morton, and that'll set him back. But I can certainly see why they're excited about number 33. Well, and you speak discipline, and that gentleman right there, that's all he's preached all season long, and especially in dealing with Lou Greenwood. Said a very talented young man, but he had to practice his way onto the field and he wasn't practicing hard enough to get a chance to make those type of plays. The practice effort has picked up, and the results have picked up in games as well. Now the back, though, is Junior Mosher. The fake pitch to him. Eastman making a guy miss, going way up top, out of the backfield. There's your fullback, Zach Paunga. Normally your fullbacks are the kind of people that are essentially third guards, but Paungu is anything but that. We've seen, I believe that's his third catch of the game. Does a nice job of getting up. But this is the big play. Eastman shows his his limited mobility, but he's able to get away from Niehaus, who had a sack. And that's got to be frustrating. Gets it over the top of the linebacker. Paungu does a great job getting up, cradling the ball. First down and goal for the Rams. Balls at the six-yard line. There in motion goes Paunga, who just caught the pass, and he will block for Mosier as Mosier cuts it back across the grain, puts his helmet down, and will spin up inside the one-yard line. Krasinski and Hendricks, two of the nation's top tacklers, combining for the stop. Got to be comforting as a running back when you've got those guys up front heading into the season. 125 collective starts, the most of any in Division I football. That offensive line has just been outstanding all year long. Pemberton, Smith, Walter, Martinez, Madsen, and Starr. Big set is in there now for Colorado State. High backs are Punga and Mosier. Hand off to Mosier. And another flag down. If it stands, it will be a touchdown. But the flag right there in the thick holding. of that offensive line. Probably a hold. He threw it right at the feet of Shelly Smith. Personal foul. Chop block. Offense number 60. 15 yards. Replay second down. Well, they call that on Martinez. And you know what? Steve Fairchild, I'm with him on this. It's very difficult to have a chop block against a goal line, a goal line situation. Watch number 60. But the idea is, is there he is right here. And you know what? That, that, that's a horrible call. I, I have no idea what that gentleman was looking at. Steve Fairchild frustrated throughout the first half of this game game wants consistency not only with his team this season but wanting a little bit right now consistency with the officials calls a timeout called by the quarterback John Eastman so what looked to be a touchdown in the first points of the day in this ball game taken back by the penalty we'll get it back to the studio real quick well sometimes when you think that you're paranoid and that somebody's after you, boy. <laughs> I think that Steve Fairchild echoes in his mind the same thing that I was thinking, which is, okay, a chop block is almost always happens on a passing play, not on a running play near the goal line. And again, by definition, uh, that, that just didn't happen. That was that was unfortunate. I, I honestly don't know what the umpire saw, and of course I don't know what the I don't know what the Rams saw either. Cam the Ram, his last game that version of Cam the Ram going into retirement. Going to retire back to Texas at season's end. Does he go out to stud? Rams do that too? I'm sure he will. Can the Rams get a stud on the field to get the ball into the end zone? And Lou Greenwood may have stepped out of bounds and come back into play because flags are down all over as he catches that pass from Eastman. I'll give Wyoming credit. They blew up that screen pass early on, and Eastman had to buy some time looking downfield, and, and you're absolutely right. Greenwood had stepped out of bounds and came back in. I don't quite know why 
came all the way across the field to explain it to Dave Christensen. Maybe if, discussing if, his options. Colorado State has to be frustrated, though. You, you, had, you had the gimme touchdown, and then you're back 15 yards. There are two fouls on the play. Ineligible downfield on the offense. That penalty is declined. Illegal touching. Receiver stepping out of bounds and being the first to touch. Lost it down at the previous spot. Third down. They made the right decision in picking that. Of course, with the screen pass, you have all sorts of offensive linemen on a timing play that's supposed to be downfield. And now this is going to be an interesting call. Third and goal at the 16-yard line as to whether or not they might throw it into the end zone or just set themselves up for a gimme field goal. You've got the big body, big physical Rayshon Greer, the perfect fade type of receiver. He's at the bottom of your screen, matched up by Tashawn Gibson. And Ponga will join him as the slot man. They look that direction, tried to set up the screen, and here it comes to Rayshon Greer. Gets a block from Pemberton, but a great defensive play by Tashawn Gibson to shut it down. John Mosher rolling around on the turf back at the 30 for the Rams. And here comes penalty. Automatic first down. Number two on Wyoming, and this one is a big one. It'll be an automatic first down for Colorado State. Well, hitting the passer. Well, the thing that's unfortunate about this for Wyoming is simply is at this point nothing happens. Now, right there, you can see Fletcher. Now, in fairness to Fletcher, maybe he doesn't know the ball is gone. But at some point there with the left arm across his chest, he, he needs to feel that. And the official, uh, because of the conscientious nature of the referees this year in protecting quarterbacks, has to make that call. At the second penalty of the day, called on Wyoming. Six penalties called on Colorado State. One took a touchdown away, but here's another chance. First and eight from the eight-yard line. Lou Greenwood strolls right down inside the one and finally pushed into the end zone. Colorado State drawing first blood. Touchdown, Rammies. Here's one of the beauties of speed, James, and that is, is that Lou Greenwood lines up a good eight yards in the backfield so he can see everything in front of him. As he lines up a little, a yard deeper than most tailbacks, when he cuts to the outside, he's able to see on that left side exactly where the gaps are. And interesting to note, too, at the end of the play, the number of offensive linemen that are helping him, and that extra point is blocked. John Fletcher, who was called for the roughing the passer, looked to be the defensive lineman for Wyoming that got a paw on it. Points are at a premium, and the Rams only get six on that drive, courtesy of the true freshman. We'll be right back. Well, back at Conroe High School in Conroe, Texas, Lou Greenwood just last year averaged over seven yards a carry, and it was just over seven yards on this touchdown carry. And too easy until he got to the one. Look at that. He's standing at about the 17 yard. He was even deeper than I thought. He's standing about the 17, and the ball's between the eight and the nine. But you can see right there. And then some help from his friends, both Seymour and Martinez, shove him into the end zone. And the extra point is blocked, which could come back to haunt Colorado State. Right in the middle, John, John Fletcher makes the effort to get up and get a piece of it. to boot it away. And here come the Pokes, and Alvester Alexander will carry a few bodies up to the 30-yard line. And that's where Austin Carter Samuels and the Wyoming offense will try to answer. You know, here in, in recent weeks on the mountain, from Alvester Alexander to Lou Greenwood to the running backs that, that we saw for the University of New Mexico, Ed Wesley, you go out Ed to Wesley. TCU, yep. there are a lot of good young kids from Texas that look to be carrying the ball here in the Mountain West Conference for years to come and doing a lot of damage. Empty set for Carter Samuels, and there's the pressure dropped. 
C.J. James gets back there again, his second sack of the day. One of the things that happens with young right-handed quarterbacks is they always want to roll to their right, but Smith does a nice job in keeping contain. Sometimes you have those defensive ends that aren't disciplined. We had a game earlier where James had some problems maintaining his control on the outside. This, this game he's been outstanding, his second sack of the ball game. A business major here at CSU. And today, sacking is his business, and business is good. And here he'll try to chase down Brandon Stewart from behind. Instead, knifing in there and making the stop, Alex Williams. Here's an update on John Mosier from Roger. A uh, guy for John Mosier, who's taken over the running back duties for CSU, had to be helped off the field in that last transition, but things checked out okay. Doctors took him over to the training table, worked on his knees. He gave a quick shake of the head that I'm all right. Doctor just pat him on the butt and said, go get him. Bailey working hard on the CSU sidelines. Natalie Vickers over on the Wyoming Cowboys sidelines. Here's a third down and 22. The freshman in trouble, had to buy some time, throws it into traffic. Here's a very late flag and way across the field coming down and hit so hard as he exposed his body. David Leonard caught the pass a couple yards shy of the first down marker and gingerly gets to the sidelines. Well, Leonard is, a, Leonard is a tall man. Ineligible downfield. 6'4". On the offense, number 67. Five-yard penalty from the previous five. Repeat, third down. Well, normally you might say to yourself, well, why, why not refuse it and make it fourth down? But because of the big game in a field position situation like this, your Colorado say you do want to push them back. But coming back to Leonard for a minute. Now, there are some advantages, obviously, to being 6'4", 6'5", but that's a lot more body to hit, too. And Leonard took a shot. So empty set and a draw or screen type situation on a third down and 28 for the Wyoming Cowboy offense. And they will throw the wide receiver screen, swinging it out there to Burkhalter. Burkhalter is dropped after he crosses the 20 yard line. So the punting unit and Austin McCoy will hop out there for the third time today. This will be his 12th punt in the last two ball games or a ball game and a half, if you will. Nice pursuit by Alex Williams from his middle linebacker spot to make the tackle there at the 21. And you mentioned the big game that McCoy had last week against TCU. He needs one of those booming punts right now to not afford Colorado State too much of a short field. Momo Thomas joins Dion Martin, Morton back there, and this one takes a big old hop over his head, and a Wyoming hop at that, and ball will be down at the 20-yard line. So there's McCoy getting the job done on the rugby punt that time. We'll be right back. Well, having a barrel of fun with you here on the mountain today. Six to nothing, Colorado State. There's Cowboy Ken, the barrel man. A fixture at all Wyoming sporting events. You know, we talked about being critical about the rugby punt. Here's one of the advantages. If you don't catch it on the fly, it can take that hop because it is end over end. And a 57-yard punt is set up there for Wyoming. And they're able to take away a little bit of the field position advantage that the Rams have had here in the second quarter. Mr. Pete wanted to get a stop out of his bounty hunter defense here as Leonard Mason checks back into the ball game, tries to bend it back on the zone play, and not much there for him as Mitch Unrein comes in for the stop. Mitch Unrein might be the most overrated player in the Mountain West Conference. Every coach that we talk to, number 98, they, and not only, not only as well as he has played now, but they genuinely believe he has a chance to play on Sunday. Very unselfish, what these Wyoming coaches say about number 98. Had a couple brothers that were football players and a sister, Natalie, an All-American swimmer at Northern Colorado. All the unrinds on hand here today. Last regular season game for the senior. Trying to go to a bowl game, though. And Rammies can't connect there. Rayshon Greer got a step by Marcel Gibson, but good job 
by Gibson to stay underneath and off the mark, Eastman. Not, not trying to beat a dead horse, but again, that's a matter of repetition. You know, Rayshon Greer has been a starter now for the last two, two and a half years. Eastman just doesn't have the same relationship with him. He threw long before he came out of his break, and he had him open. If he'd have waited a beat out of his break, he might have been able to get him. Now, speaking of family trees, John Eastman won of 11, six brothers, four sisters, and all of his brothers played quarterback in high school. Five of the brothers have played college football as quarterbacks. Here's your third down and long, and he can't connect with the freshman Lou Greenwood. So the Bounty Hunter defense gets a big stand here and looks to get the ball in good field position as Kondodiakis in the punting unit trots out. That's got to be frustrating for the offensive people of Colorado State. They had Greenwood on the flat route. He was open by a good two yards, and Eastman had plenty of protection, but just couldn't deliver the goods. There's Leonard, who took the big pop on the last offensive series, and the return is on for him. Leonard's going to have to backtrack inside his own 30, though. And right up the gut, here comes David Leonard. Across the 30-yard line, Kondodiak is the last guy to beat, and the punter pushes him out of bounds, but not until the Cowboys drive deep down into the 20-yard line. A 52-yard return. Derek Good, a reserve defensive back. Watch in the middle of the field. You're going to see this. Out kicks the coverage, but right here, when you're going to come back, you're going to watch Derek Good, number 26, right there at the bottom. He's with his foot right here. As he cuts through, he's just standing there. What am I doing? What am I doing? If he's paying attention, he can make the tackle at the 50, but he's too involved with the blocker. And as a result, Leonard is able to get past that second wave of defenders. You point out, James, the punter has to make the tackle. Rams show blitz. Both Williams and Sisson come. It's picked up and almost picked off. Oppenier, who had an interception and returned at 97 yards for a touchdown against New Mexico last week, can't hang on to it. If we had to, if we had to pick the one player who has been consistent, game in and game out for Colorado State this year, it's number 11, Nick Oppenier. We watched him last week run back an interception, 97 yards for a touchdown. There he essentially ran the route for Bolger. Almost got his fifth pick of the season. Alexander's the back. And a gain of one, maybe two, before he's met by Ivory Hurd, the sophomore stepping up from his safety spot in a hurry. Alex Williams there as well. You see the body language of Alexander's frustrated. The inability of his offensive line to create some gaps, but Alex Williams has been plagued with some injuries this year. Has been playing some good football today. Has made a number of plays. We've called number 51's name a couple of times. Missed a few games, middle of the season with an injury. He's got the knee better. Can he and the Rams get a big stop on third down and nine now? Three-man rush and a dump off to the tight end and a great job running after the catch big number 85 that's Jesson Salyers but James Skelton is the one here who misses the tackle they decide to go into a coverage mode number 43 just couldn't make the tackle they they rushed three covered with eight the idea was to let him catch the ball in front make the tackle force a field goal Skelton misses the tackle and as a result first and goal for the Cowboys great job blocking for their quarterback Two pokes on the edge, and Austin Carter Samuels lunges into the end zone, and we're tied at six. James, you called it. Greg Gano, the tight end, does a great job out front. It looked for just a brief moment that he was going to get tackled in the backfield. Now it's number 42 with the lead block. Coming, coming out here to the side, watch 42 come around and watch him just, just knock Williams down. And as a result of that block, Carter Samuels was able to cut inside and get the touchdown. And of course, now that made extra point, that big play by Fletcher now with a block looms large. Ian Watts, the freshman out of Philadelphia. And here you'll see it, not only is it Jenho on Williams, but it's David Leonard you're gonna see on the left of your screen. And Ford a little too late as the freshman gets another rushing touchdown. Very creative in having Jenho come across 
while you have Alexander going the other direction. As a linebacker, you can appreciate this, James. You have keys that you're trying to read. And so when a back goes one direction or a guard goes one direction and the play actually goes the other way, that's where the confusion the defense sets in. Nice job by the offense. Good call by Christensen and Arroyo on that set. Austin Carter Samuels doing it with his feet here. He is one of 14 players in the nation, Todd, to rush for a pass, catch a touchdown, or a touchdown, catch a touchdown, and throw a touchdown. Three more of the 14 play for Colorado State. Deion Morton, John Mosier, and Grant Stucker. Stucker, who did not suit out today. There's Austin Carter Samuels. And another one in the Mountain West Conference, Warzika for the Air Force Falcons has done it as well. Triple threats and just a freshman. Bright future ahead for that Pope. So with a one point lead now, Pope's kick off and here comes Dion Morton. Morton gonna get some good field position for his offense. And the senior with a 34 yard return. I think this is a big deal for Colorado State for this reason, James. So many times we just give the special teams the short shrift. Obviously, Leonard's return sets up the touchdown. And now, in effect, you get two free first downs. Instead of being at the 20-yard line, you're out to the 38. And that makes a big difference for an offense to look out and say, hey, you know what? If we can get 30, 35 yards, we're in field goal range, as opposed to, say, having to go 50. Not bad numbers for Eastman. Well, last week he went 9 of 12 with one interception, 145 yards, and a touchdown, trying to retake the lead here before halftime. Again, they go for that out route to Deion Morton, who tugs his jersey and looks at the official, saying that Tashawn Gibson was holding on. No flags, though, second down and 10. Well, now 9 for 12, and again, I, I would think that the Colorado State faithful have to ask themselves the question, what got us here? Didn't we have a guy that rushed for 177 last week? Isn't that our... Our bread and butter, our strength, and with two minutes and seven seconds remaining, that's plenty of time here on their own 38. You see our guys flashing up at the bottom of your screen. Here in a few moments, we'll take it back down I-25. The guys in the studio will take over. Big weekend in the Mountain West Conference, starting here with the border war, and this time they do connect. Deion Morton pulls it down across the 45-yard line. Another flag down, though, in the backfield of Colorado State. This one going to go against Wyoming, though. Apparently, this looks like it might be a hands to the face. 16 yards the pickup if the play stands. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 44. That penalty is declined, what result of the play, first down. And that's Josh Bazoons, the sophomore linebacker 44, the buck linebacker for this 3-4 defense. 19-yard completion of Colorado State, first down. Well, Bazoons, Hendricks, and Napton stands Personal foul penalties like that have been very special for this Bounty Hunter squad this year. All sophomores. Two Coloradoans and Bazoons here from Prior Lake, Minnesota. Fresh set of downs under 145 to play here in the first half for the Rams as they play action. Fake off the counter OT and the throwback to the fullback. Pwned. And a great job defensively staying at home by Prezinski and company. Prezinski, an outstanding athlete here, at just a junior at the safety, but back in high school, a three-sport stud on the track, a state champion in basketball and football as well. Played for his dad, actually, in hoops. Paul Prezinski, still a coach there for the Buffalo Bison. Won a couple of state titles in track and field, too, didn't he? Underneath to Rayshon Greer. Good job by Bazoons to sniff it out and hustle down and pull down the wide receiver. A loss of two. So second down and eight becomes third down and ten now. And Steve Fairchild wants to talk it over with Eastman. And you can see he's not happy with it for whatever reason. But again, you know, these are the plays that are being called. So I can only imagine what that conversation is. CSU Athletics. Again, I come back to what I said earlier regarding the running game. I, it just, it just seems I'm, I'm quizzical in terms of 
you know, after rushing so effectively last week and with a quarterback who hasn't started before, who's already thrown 15 balls, I, I'm, I'm confused. Of course, I do get confused a lot. So <laughs> Don't be so hard on yourself, Todd. I've never seen you confused. Four years now, finishing up four years this weekend. Very proud to not only call this rivalry matchup. We'll head across those Rocky Mountains this evening and tomorrow night. Todd and I will call the Beehive Boot rivalry between Utah and BYU. Two nine and two teams, two top 25 teams going at it. Here with Natalie Vickers and Roger Bailey down on the field along with some Ram crazies. Here at Hughes Stadium today on a Friday afternoon. Glad you're with us. Just about a minute to go in the first half of the 101st meeting between these two squads. And way high for Rayshon Greer. And incomplete. So a fourth down and 10 now with 58 seconds remaining. Again, they go the direction of Tashawn Gibson. There's a brief hesitation there as to whether or not to punt, but they've made the right decision here and kicking it, kicking it away. And once again, Eastman comes to the sidelines and gets an earful. Well, and he continues to get an earful, Todd. And remember, coming off of that bye week, going into last week's game, all we heard about was T.J. Borky taking these snaps. This punt will not get off as flags come down. But Borky, a sophomore who had moved to wide receiver, an outstanding you hear, you hear the crowd moaning because of that punt. Beautiful punt that rolled down inside the five yard line and would have been down. Legal procedure against the Rams. But instead, a legal procedure will push him back five yards. But last week in Albuquerque, when Stucker went down with the shoulder slash chest injury, we all thought that Borky, who really had the bulk of the reps in the bye week, would come in. But it was John Eastman, the Snow College transfer getting the call and rallied the Rams, but in a losing effort, it was the first win of the season for, at the time, an 0-10 New Mexico Lobo squad. First win as a Lobo head coach for Mike Loxley and his staff. They will travel to Fort Worth as the TCU Horned Frogs try to remain perfect tomorrow. So here's a high punt from Kondodiakis. Leonard calls for the fair catch and does just what you ask of your return man. Put those heels at the 10. If it's over your head, let it roll into the end zone. Now 48 seconds remaining in a lead by a point. You wonder here as to whether or not they want to see if they can generate something or no, no, they're, they're content to, they're content to let it go. Yeah, we'll take a knee and reminding you that Remax first and 10 line brought to you by the folks at Remax, the sign you want, the agent you need, but Austin Carter Samuels and company don't look like they're trying to attain that line. Now, when I referenced, when I referenced earlier about my own confusion, I would think that 7-6 at the end of the first half, you would have anticipated this, especially the way the defenses have struggled for these two teams over the last couple of weeks. Just goes to show what you said earlier about you just don't know from week to week what to expect. And not just here with these two teams, but college football as a whole. Yeah. Who'd have thunk that the Texas A&M Aggies would give the Longhorns all they could handle last night in a very good ball game to get the weekend started. And we're getting it rolling for you. Mountain West Conference style with a big border war clash. Seven to six, our halftime score. And Wyoming one half away from perhaps becoming bowl eligible and going to their first bowl game since the Las Vegas Bowl. Short squib kick comes up, and it's a great job of fielding the ball. I believe that that's the reserve tight end who made the catch. And got the ball upfield. Roderick Sargent gets him to the 40-yard line. And of course, that was one of the issues that we were discussing near the end of the first half is the idea is whether or not Wyoming would go for it and try to try to get something going there at the end of the first half. They opted not to, and now Colorado State an outstanding field position here on their own 39-yard line to start the second half. And of course, the discussion here, as we had at halftime, James, is the idea as to whether or not they're going to try 
and see if they can pound the ball as they did so effectively against New Mexico last week. First play from scrimmage. They line up in eye backs and come right with the power game, and it's Leonard Mason. The injury to John Mosher put him on the stationary bike there for most of the first half, and it's Mason, the Juco transfer, with a gain of four. But I got to tell you, though, now, if you're, if you're Leonard Mason, you have a great opportunity here. You've been neck and neck with Mosier all year long in terms of who's the guy that's going to get the job. If you rise to the occasion here and have a big second half, you could be the guy that's the starting running back heading into the spring, despite the fact they have a number of young redshirt players who are awfully good at the position. Transfer coming in from UCLA. Here's Honga, who had a great first half coming out of the backfield. A great pass catching fullback, and I know that's music to your ears right there. The fullback getting more reception stuff. Well, Paolo, I believe that's either his fourth or fifth catch of the game. He's done a nice job coming out of the backfield. And again, it's not like he just catches the ball and falls down. In this case, he gets a first down. Yeah, that's his fifth, that's his fifth catch now for 35 yards. Fullback had a different connotation when I was young. Jim Brown was a fullback, you know. Fullback. The Vince is another idea now in contemporary football. Great drop back pass for Eastman. Plenty of time, and he airs it out for Morton. Good job covering, but got turned around there late to Sean Gibson. Needs to make sure there isn't so much space in between him and the senior, but it is incomplete. Once again, I have to say I'm, I'm just a little bit surprised. Eastman, I know that he's had some accuracy. He's 12 for 17 now, but a number of those passes have been in the underneath variety. Get a first down, pounding the ball a little bit with a short throw, and then you go up top and second and 10. Mason the lone back, switching sides to the other slot as Pong play pass. And a long throw to Greer. Greer will bend it back inside and hanging on for dear life is Shamil Gary, the freshman safety, comes nice field tackle to hang on, taking the shoe off of Rayshon. That was a nice tackle. Shamil Gary earlier in the year against Weber State had three interceptions in a game. And they're counting on him to be potentially another Przinski so that they could match up with two outstanding safeties there in the secondary. A lot of great safeties have come through this program in recent years. John Wendling, of course. couple years ago. Here's the quick pitch to Mason. They take advantage of the speed to get outside. He takes advantage of the great big blocks like that of Paul Madsen. And it's a first down deep into Wyoming territory. Go the Cowboys. You're right about Paul Madsen and Tyson Liggett gets out front too. Watch the right of your screen. Here he comes on, here he comes on the motion. And here come those two big bodies. And I got to tell you, I don't care how tough you are in the secondary. When you see those athletic, quick guards and tackles get out there in front of you, you got to be a little bit frightened. And Mason, as you pointed out with the speed, gets to the outside and sets him up a first down just inside the 25. Madsen, the lone starter that will return on that offensive line, just a sophomore showing the athletic ability. And here come the big bodies again, this time to the right side of the field. And Madsen leading the charge one more time. Sets the block on Gary, and it'll be a first down. A 19-yard, 14-yard pickup that time for Mason. What a job by Madsen, as you point out, James, coming out. Bam, here they come. Here come those speedsters. And Madsen stayed behind, biding his time, biding his time. Now Mason cuts up field as Martinez kicks out. Madsen rolls over a secondary member. You got you to say, I think it's got to be fun to run behind those guys. Not only big and tough, but athletic. Todd, you mentioned it at halftime, averaging eight yards a carry. Don't stray until they stop it. And they certainly don't hear student body in the quick pitch to the left side of the field. This time it is shut down, smothered by that poke defense. It was Gabe Napton with his fourth tackle of the day. James, a number of years ago, one of the quarterbacks that I played with was Kenny the Snake Stabros, who got an injury on the field. That's Seymour, the tight end. Adam Seymour, Altaloma, California native. Continuing that story, though, Kenny Staber was one of those who, if it got four yards, he'd go again. If it got five yards, he'd go again, get three yards. He would he would make you stop it. He, he, and, and 
it would appear that maybe that's a little bit more of the mindset of Steve Fairchild heading here in, into the second half. One of the axioms in college football is what really, you know, in, in most levels of football, but particularly college football, if you have that group, your best group, that's who you want to put the game on. Meaning that if you've got a great defense, of course, you play defensively. If you've got a great kicker, quarterback, running back, whatever. Colorado State has a tremendous offensive line, although it's been set back a little bit here by Seymour. Now that's the second tight end to have been replaced because Eric Pites, the starter earlier in the year, went down with an injury as well. Remember a couple of weeks ago, Bill Belichick and that call, I had no problem at all with it. You've got your quarterback there, games on the line, two yards. Who else do you want the ball, have the ball in your hands? You want to give it over to Manning? I don't think so. High backs are Punga and Mason. Mason behind the block of Zach. And so on second down and goal from the 10, the Rams get six. It'll be third down and goal from the four. This is indicative of what I'm talking about in terms of, of making you stop it. Normally, you know, you're sitting there in a situation where you say, oh, gosh, you know what? We better go with the play action here and fool them a little bit. Instead, with that offensive line, they push forward around six yards. Now, defensively, you have to think to yourself, it's not obvious that it's a pass because they've run the ball so effectively. Defensively, now they have to be ready for both, where normally in a situation you think a play action pass would be obvious. Straight drop back, no play action to it. Plenty of time for Eastman. Ponga powers his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Colorado State. It's interesting because there are some situations where, as a defense, you say, OK, we're good. Let him catch it in front of us, and we'll make a tackle. It'll be fine. But I tell you what, when you got a big body like Powell Good, six foot, 240 pounds, you don't, you don't realize the momentum that he's going to take with you into the end zone. That's what, exactly what happened. Low snap this time that Yem does a good job of putting down. This extra point is good. The first one was blocked by Fletcher, the great high school linebacker at Lakewood High School, switches over to the offensive side and is getting things done. Rams on top. Zach Paunga has been a key cog in this game, and not just in blocking. Six catches for 40 yards, none are bigger. Take a look right here. He's just going to wander out. There's nobody to block. Got all, all day to throw. He catches it at the five. Now you figure that you can close in and get him. You can. Not that 240-pounder when he lowers his shoulder. In for the touchdown today. Did you note there, a career high. First touchdown catch of the season was against Nevada. In a big win for these Rams. Nevada has turned out to be a pretty solid football team. We'll take on Boise State tomorrow. Actually, I think it's tonight. Tonight, rather, they're on the blue turf. Here comes Marcel Gibson. Well, you, you look at that Nevada win. Of course, the win to start the season for this Colorado State team in Boulder against the University of Colorado, beating Weber State as well. And for the first time in 15 years, the Rams started 3-0 and really looked to take last year's seven-win season and roll with it. And what a lot of people thought, they might be knocking on the door, becoming one of the top-tier teams. A lot of injuries and a lot of inconsistencies if you listen to Steve Fairchild and trying to stop an eight-game losing streak today against their big rivals. And what is the last game of the year for the Rams? And Pokes trying to go to a bowl. Quarterback keeper here, Austin Carter Samuels, is hit by Momo Thomas. But a pickup of about seven on first down. Young and strong, six foot two, two ten, but at some point, I think he needs to learn to slide. Because he is your he's your guy on offense. But sometimes you don't want to take those hits. Here's a design quarterback keeper as he'll follow the big pulling bodies and guys like Greg Gino and Alvester Alexander lead the way in what looks to be close to a first down. Will be just a yard shy though, third down and very short, one yard to go for the first. Colorado State scoring on their opening drive of the second half. 
First drive of the second half for the Cowboys. It'll be a first down is taken down by the shoes by Travis Ford is Alexander, but he leans forward and the sticks will move. Good that Ford was able to hold on because he cut back against the green. Colorado State had over pursued and he would have been past midfield. Ford is one of those guys with a great, great body. Six foot three, 205 pounds. I mean, a great safety body, but for whatever reason, he hasn't been able to turn that great physique into being a great football player just yet. Ford getting his first start today. The junior from Oakland. So here's your first down. Brandon Stewart, the new back, will help to pick up the blitz. Rolling to his left, can't find anybody. Great coverage down the field by Ford. And Momo Thomas as well will be a short pickup by Carter Samuels. And this is the balance that Wyoming wants to find defensively is their ability to pressure the, pressure the quarterback and at the same time still have coverage downfield. They come with one on the blitz. Williams from the inside. He's able to scramble out of bounds but for a minimal gain. Only four yards rushing. A lot of negative plays, a couple sacks against Wyoming. Trying to get another one is Michael Sisson. Hot pursuit and he brings him down. Turning on the Jets is the sophomore linebacker. Big play for the Rams. And you have to and you have to figure that Carter Sammons is used to outrunning those guys. But Sisson, Sisson is actually out on the flat in some sort of coverage, but there's nobody in his vicinity. He actually takes a pretty poor angle, which shows the speed of number six as he drops Carter Sammons for a loss and a sack. 14 and a half tackles for loss on the season for number six and five sacks. Looking back before the year ever started, it was linebacking partner Ricky Brewer, who was suspended for this season. So the Rams have been without his services. A lot of pressure on Sisson this year. He'll blitz this time off the edge. Williams hits Austin Carter Samuels and forces the throw to go a little long. Good job underneath coverage by Travis Ford. Skelton comes completely untouched from the outside and give Ford credit. That's man to man isn't his thing. Watch the top of your screen. Oh man, I tell you what, as a quarterback, that's where you earn your money because nobody touches number 43. He was able to hang in there and deliver the ball, but not quite on the money. And as a result, the Cowboys are going to have to punt. So the sophomore national punter of the week, McCoy in there one more time. Another rugby style, only one step this time and a couple big hops and one handing it is Dion Morton. Able to fall forward. Good coverage by that Wyoming punt cover team. So a touchdown opening drive for the Rams. Their second stab at it in the second half when we come back. All right, welcome back to Fort Collins where the Rams have a 13-7 lead. And I'm joined by a special guest, Mike Hendricks, father of Brian Hendricks, linebacker for the Wyoming Cowboys. And originally, this wasn't the way it was supposed to work out. You being a former athlete at CSU and your father, your offspring decides to go down to Wyoming. How much of a change is that for you guys? Well, it was pretty huge. <laughs> we, we had, like I said, you know, had, had been with CSU forever. And I had kind of expected him to go to CSU, but... When he decided to go to Laramie, I guess, uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's his game now. Now, you follow both programs. What do you see from CSU? You're a former teammate of Steve Fairchild. What do you see out of the CSU and Wyoming programs? Well, I think that uh, both programs are, are in the next few years are, are really going to make some noise. And I know Steve is going to turn this uh, this CSU program around. They've got some they've got some good people in there, and, and he's just a, a real smart coach. Dave Christensen's doing the same thing with Wyoming. We were supposed to finish last, and we might go to a bowl game if we can beat the Rams. All right, real quick, is it painful to put on the brown and gold after wearing the green and gold for a long time? Well, yeah, you know, I have to I have to put on some ointment a little bit. <laughs> yeah, to further rashes, but all in all. Blood, blood thicker than water, huh? That's right. All right. Thank you, sir. <laughs> thank it's a pleasure. James Todd. All right. Thank you, Roger. Second down and nine now is Brian Hendricks. Tries to help defend and shut down this Ram offense. Actually ran into the Hendricks family in the hotel, the lobby this morning. They all had the brown and gold in the number eight on. Met Brian's mom and his brother as well. Rayshon Greer on the reception there, just about a yard shy of a first down. So it will be third down and one now with the ball on the Rams' own 31-yard line. Actually, it's not a rash, it's hives. Once he gets, once they take that off, he'll be fine. 
There's Tim Miles reaching the peak in the CSU season pass. Always animated, always fun. Timmy Miles is out there somewhere cheering on his Colorado State football team, and he's got to like that run by Mason. Brian Hendricks with his fifth stop of the day, but a little too late as the chains will move. Talked about that offensive line, but give Mason credit there. Not much of a gap there, but he's able to squeeze between guard and tackle and get that first down with some tough running out to the 35. Hendricks, as you pointed out, you know, that's a great story. Very entertaining. The whole Colorado State situation and the young man opts to go to Wyoming and, and and Roger's right. Hey, it's your, it's your son. Got to do it. Well, Brian actually was offered more wrestling scholarships than football scholarships. Chose to play football and making a tackle there. But again, a couple yards past the first down marker. So Mason really feeling it right now. A gain of 11 in the first set of downs. Colorado State able to get the corner on the outside, which is rare because when you have the near boundary, that's, that's usually easier to cover. Impressive, mate. That's seven yards of carry. <laughs> My listeners are laughing, saying, oh, yeah. Way to go, Todd. You figured that one right out. Tyson Leggett will line up as the tailback as they hand off to Pahunga. And back there in a hurry, Mike Newhouse, Marcel Gibson, and about three other white hats. Great penetration, and of course, Pahunga, but the fullback position doesn't get the luxury of seeing anything open up on the offensive line. And so, Colorado State with double digits here on second down. A little short of 12. Mason will check back in. Eye is offset behind Eastman. Eastman in his first FBS start. Hands off to Mason, who's got the edge. Gets going north and south. Napton seemed to have him around the neck, but he slithers out of it and powers forward for 11 yards and another Ram first down. That shows his lower body strength, but once again, Colorado State able to get the corner on the short side. Blocking at the point of attack is outstanding. And as we mentioned, that lower body strength, you're right, James. When he had him around the neck, you would have thought he was going to go down, but he keeps his legs going and able to get the first down. Watch once again. This is just a, that's a great job by Madsen to come off one man, get another. But he pulls him down. Look at the legs still going. Madsen and Starr doing an outstanding job there for Colorado State. Mason went for 107 in his first Division I football game against the Colorado Buffaloes in the win to start the season on a Sunday early in the fall. There's Josh Bazoons on the stop. We remind you, Colorado State trying to keep these Wyoming Cowboys out of a bowl game at season's end. Wyoming sitting at five wins in Dave Christensen's first year, a team that was picked to finish ninth in the Mountain West Conference has a chance not only to go bowling, but also to finish this 2009 football season at fifth in the league. Eastman on the play pass, tries to avoid Bazoons, but Bazoons recovering and Josh brings down Eastman for a big sack for the Pope defense. Kind of an even situation. If you remember that play earlier in the game, it was Niehaus who was unable to get the sack. This time, Bazoons under control a little bit, able to hit the brakes, come back, and drop Eastman for a sack. And Colorado State now at third and 13. Certainly not what they want. Five of 10. Eastman and the Rams on third down. And you're right, a lot of yards to go for a fresh set here. Thrown a little bit too strong to Lou Greenwood. Streaking up there in a hurry was to Sean Gibson. And so the Wyoming defense stands, thanks in large part to the big sack by the sophomore linebacker, Bazoons. Now, it'll be interesting here. I'm guessing that Kadidiakos is going to punt it down the middle and hope that his people can cover it. Remember the last time he tried to angle it out? It ended out at about the 23-yard line. But, no, well, angling it again. Well, maybe wise to keep it away from David Leonard. His 53-yard punt return in the first half was really 
The only offense that we've seen so far today from this Wyoming Cowboy team put them in position to score their only touchdown of the game. But having said that, it's a 25-yard punt, and you really you don't take the opportunity for field position and make Leonard do it again, is what I would say. Well, let's take a peek at those BCS standings while we have a chance. Three teams from the Mountain West Conference check in in the top 25. TCU, of course, the number four team in the nation will finish things off tomorrow at home. Just had a river named after them that runs through Fort Worth. And BYU and Utah, the only top 25 matchup of the weekend will take place tomorrow in Provo, Utah, right here on the mountain. The battle for the Beehive boot, both BYU and Utah falling to TCU. And TCU, when you look at those Texas Longhorns, Alabama and Florida as well, TCU has three wins over current BCS top 25 teams. The big win early in the season at Clemson, of course, at BYU, and then handling Utah a couple weeks ago in Fort Worth. Alabama also now has three wins over top 25 BCS teams as Ole Miss with their big upset over LSU checks in this week in the top 25. Virginia Tech and LSU there as well. But Florida and Texas only one win over top 25 BCS teams. So Todd, maybe TCU, if, if all goes according to plans as, as far as favorites go here the rest of the way out, maybe TCU doesn't get into that national championship game, but they will go to a BCS game probably and, and they deserve to be talked about when talked about that national championship game because this is Wyoming this is the only team Dave Christensen his Wyoming Cowboys the only team to have played both Texas and TCU and you talk to any of those guys both games in Laramie really a coin toss when you ask who's better between the Longhorns or the Horn Frogs you know the phrase preaching to the choir that's what you just did I'm with you partner all the way I like TCU a lot Gary Patterson's Frogs, one of the speedier teams in the nation. Can we get any offense going from these Wyoming Cowboys? The handoff to Brandon Stewart. And Momo Thomas brings him down after a six-yard game. Good start for the Cowboys there with a six-yard game. Remember at halftime in the interview, <coughs> just before half when Natalie Vickers was interviewing, Dave Christensen, he talked about the adjustments that they would have to make because Colorado State continued to blitz. Thus far, we haven't been able to see him, but a lot of the reason for that is that Colorado State has dominated time of possession here in the third quarter. Here's the handoff as they try to stretch it to the right, Wyoming. Stepping up and lowering a shoulder, Ivory heard, but the tough collision there from the sophomore running back from Evansville, Indiana, Brandon Stewart. Stewart actually a running back in high school, played wide receiver his first couple years at the University of Wyoming, and these Wyoming coaches realizing, hey, he was a pretty good back in high school. We could use a little bit of juice there at the tailback spot. And so Stewart, earlier this year, became a running back, reminding you that the folks at REMAX bring you that first down line, the sign you want, the agent you need, thanks to REMAX. Four-man rush and across the middle to David Leonard. Leonard on first down gets a gainer of about seven. Do a nice job picking up the blitz in this instance, giving Carter Samuels plenty of time to deliver the ball to Leonard across the middle of the field. Leonard with four catches over 70 yards now. Sisson was lined up on the slot man, but now shows blitz and will come off the edge. Drop Michael Sisson with the sack. Zach Kennedy just does, Zach Kennedy just does not get out quick enough. Watch the guard, the left guard. He has to come back, and he's got to get Sisson. Sisson able to duck around the left arm of Kennedy and get the sack. Now along with Smith, he too has two sacks on the day. And that sack... That sack will wrap up our third quarter of play. We'll be right back. The Mountain. 
It's total Wyoming coverage. Reverse left, that's good for Ty. Beating the first one in the Live games, breaking team news. Cowgirls, insider coverage. Celebrate the brown and gold. Running the floor, right the floor. Launches a long-range three and it trains through. Show your true colors all season long. She can hit the three and go. The freshman Lou Jackie not slamming it down. The mountain where the West is one. Check it out. Well, somewhere up north along the Rocky Mountain Range is the great state of Wyoming. The boys from Wyoming have traveled down to colorful Colorado and Hughes Stadium here in Fort Collins, Colorado today to take place in the 101st Border War. One quarter left to play. Colorado stayed on top by 13 to seven score and trying to keep these Wyoming Cowboys away from six wins and out of a bowl game here in Dave Christensen's first year. Last play of the third quarter was a blitz and a sack by Sisson. He comes off the edge again, but is picked up this time. Buddy's gift to Carter Samuels, but he avoids the sack and throws it across the middle. What a big play. Took forever to develop. And David Tooley, the backup tight end with the catch. And he says the pain with that left knee. Tooley does an outstanding job of coming across and coming back to his quarterback to catch the ball, but he fell awkwardly. Well, this is what Carter Samuels does best. Despite the bliss, he's able to get to the outside. And as you, it seemed like an interminable amount of time, as you pointed out, James throws back against the body, does everything that you're not supposed to do. And as he gets and he gets tackled, as he gets tackled there by Marcus Shaw, he rolls onto his knee. That's unfortunate. Tooley, a freshman, and just like is Coach Dave Christensen coming to Laramie, Wyoming, from Missouri, a mobile. Missouri product, six foot five, two hundred ten pounder. If you remember earlier, his feet game. will be helped off. Let's get it down to Natalie Vickers. A tough loss to that redshirt freshman right now. We'll look into that later. But uh, you know, if you're CSU in this game, you don't want to have any one of your own on the other sideline. Well, in fact, a man that was a coach for CSU for 12 years, Dan Hammerschmidt, he is the uh, the wide receivers coach for Wyoming now. And talking to Fairchild earlier this week, he said it's going to look a little bit weird and unattractive <laughs> to see him in that uh, brown outfit that he has on over here. But uh, you can't. I think that's good to have someone that knows you so well on the other sideline. Absolutely, Natalie, and look at this. Austin Carter Samuels, one rushing touchdown on the day. Make it two. Touchdown. Austin Carter Samuels goes 49 yards and ties it at 13. We have been complimenting the backs for Colorado State and their ability to follow their blockers, but number five does a great job himself. Look at the patience that he has that he comes up field, pushes on the blockers, now cuts to the outside. Check out the stiff arm he puts on Nick Oppenier. Drops him right down, and that enables him to go the distance. Ian Watts in. And he has put the Wyoming Cowboys back on top by one. A late flag comes in after that extra point. And how about the wheels on the true freshman and the power as well as you mentioned, Todd, the stiff arm throwing down up an ear like a rag doll there in the middle of that 49-yard run. While we sort this one out, just to finish up with Natalie's story, you know, Dan Hammerschmidt, actually a graduate in 1985 right. of Colorado Personal State. Foul. Hitting the center before one second had elapsed. 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the cookoff. Extra point is good. I have to tell you, this, this umpire has made some of the more curious calls today with the chop blocks and the hitting the center a second. I'm confused about that. Right there, he catches him just at the right spot. The timing could not have been better. 
Look at Sisson in pursuit. Great speed by the outside linebacker, but just a little bit too late. Look at he does a great job there, and Stewart able to put the block out front for him, and there it is, the stiff arm again. Up and ear goes down, and number five goes the distance. You know, we talked at the top of the show, James, about, you know, it couldn't be a situation where Austin Carter Sammy makes all the plays for them to win, but prior to this play, the, the, the absolutely huge play of this drive has to be converting third and 13 when he's running all over the field, throwing against his body, back to the middle of the field, which everybody tells you not to do, but it ends up being successful. Just turned 18 last April, did Carter Samuels in, in a game where the Cowboys have been looking for any kind of offensive spark that they could get. 49-yard touchdown run by Austin, and it was back in that tight Utah game on the road, a big surprise in Salt Lake City. And looking for any kind of offense, it was a throwback and a reception for 30 yards and a touchdown against the Utah Utes as they gave Utah you, all they could handle. I, I don't understand that. When you're kicking off from the 45, why wouldn't you kick a squib kick or a blue kick and see if you can get somebody inside the 20? Over and over again, we see that. They just blasted it out of the end zone. Well, that's Jake Scott, who hasn't had a lot of experience kicking off, just regaining the job this week. Natalie's got an update for us on the Wyoming sidelines. That's right, I do. On uh, David Tooley, the tight end that just uh, was carried off. Well, they are putting ice on his left knee. They're going to put it in a brace and put him on a knee mobilizer. I can say all the uh, coaches over here, the trainers, are giving him pep talks in his ear, and he's, he's taking it a bit tough, and, and he's, he's yelling in pain. Okay, thank you, Natalie. Rayshon Greer with that catch. You know, it's interesting when you have your back to the defender, the decision that you have to make, whether or not you're going to pivot in or pivot out. In that situation, he pivots out as we see Thule in a bit of pain, and his day is done. But certainly, he will have the satisfaction of knowing that he combined, at least to this point, to the biggest play of the game for the Cowboys. An eight-yard pickup to Greer. Second down and two now for Eastman in the Ram offense. And ball is loose. Mason put it on the turf. Dion Morton unable to get it, and then it bounces right back to the senior receiver. A fortunate hop for Colorado State. Now, Dion Morton, because of his athleticism, initially wanted to pick it up and go. And that would have been, a, and that was an enormous mistake. When the ball is on the ground, unless you've got free reign, you got to go. Mason cuts back against the grain. He, you know, it just pops out. It wasn't stripped or anything else. Right there, you saw Morton not get it on the first try, but he gets it on the second. Mason cuts back, goes over, ironically enough, James, goes over 100 yards on that play. But there's the, there's the collision, the ball pops out. Morton dribbles a little bit, and as you pointed out, very fortuitous that the bounce came his way. Well, there's an injury to, to Sean Gibson, who's been very active throughout this ball game. It'll help him to the sidelines. It's been a Wyoming team that has stayed healthy for the most part this season. We've seen a couple big playmakers go down on back-to-back -back drives. Here's the true freshman, Lou Greenwood, tries to stretch. He's run down by Gabe Napton. Napton now unofficially with eight tackles. And Chris Trzinski, who's been all over the field, actually caused the fumble on the hit on Mason two plays ago. The junior, we talked up his athleticism earlier, and well, 125 tackles ties him for ninth all time in Wyoming history. Has a chance to move up even a couple more slots before today and perhaps this season is over if the Cowboys can go bowling with a win today over the Rams. Play pass for Eastman. Steps up in the pocket and fires it to Morton. Morton across the 50 and forced out of bounds. Interesting too that in that situation Morton is covered by Shamil Gary. A safety. He's the inside receiver. He cuts to the inside, makes it look like that's what he's going to do. Eastman able to step up untouched, delivers the ball on the money, first down for the Rams.
you know, so much more is expected of Dion Morton, I think, heading into the season. But as you pointed out at the top of the show, some of the inconsistencies with the quarterback play has have really affected him. He had 10, 10 touchdowns receiving last year, but it just hasn't worked out this time around. 14 to 13, our score here with 12 in the ball game. Let's get it down to the studio while I've got a chance. Well, welcome back. Beautiful day here in Fort Collins. And to Sean Gibson, right back out on the field. Natalie, he wouldn't let anybody look at him over there on the sidelines, would he? Sat on the sideline with the trainer. However, he was so uncooperative. He kept getting up. He was so into the game. And by the time his crew was going out there, he said, I'm ready to go back in. And he just got up and went out on the field. He was limping out there, limped back. But it looks like he's walking it off a bit. All right. Tough thanks. guy. Yes. Tough guy, tough girl down there working hard today. Natalie Vickers on the Wyoming sidelines. Roger Bailey on the Colorado State side. Let's see what they've got on first and 10. Ball is thrown low. And first catch of the day for Matt Yim, who has had his hands on the ball a couple times, holding on extra points. One of those blocked the first touchdown of the game. That's why we sit at 14 to 13. Wyoming on top by one. John Eastman in his first FBS start. The outstanding Juco quarterback with Snow College the last couple years. From Sandy, Utah, Colorado born then. Back home in Colorado to play some ball. So here goes Mason, airborne, as coming underneath was the safety, Prasinski, and able to go up and over and dive for a first down is Mason. Well, you know what? I'm a, I'm a track and field guy. Let's see how far this is. Watch when Przinski comes up and how many extra yards he gets right to peak. Yeah, that, that, that's close to four yards. So that's pretty athletic on the part of number two to maintain his balance and get the additional yardage and set up a first down for Colorado State there at the 35-yard line. And there are the numbers on the day for Mason having a terrific day. Also a Juco guy, Mason played at the College of the Desert last year will add on to that 108 yards as he carries a couple Wyoming defenders inside the 30 yard line. And one of the things that's an issue now here in the fourth quarter for Wyoming is that front seven. Are they going to be able to maintain their conditioning? Because this is what that offensive line of Colorado State can do is it starts to wear you down and those two and three yard gains earlier in the game become four five and six. And you have to figure the Masons fresh. <laughs> we told earlier, did not play a down against New Mexico last week. Wasn't injured. Coach just said he didn't practice hard enough in the week leading up. Here's the trap play. They try to hit it right up the gut and hit right in the face mask by Weston Johnson is the junior running back. Good anticipation by Weston Johnson. Terrific play. Six foot three, 230 pounder. Penetrates, is able to find a gap. That's a big tackle there because this is difficult field goal territory when you're outside the 40 yard line. Bend the lines long as a 47 yarder. So this could be an interesting call for Steve Fairchild here at third and five. Look, look at his shield, Todd. You talk about slobber knocking or snot knocking. Yeah. <laughs> look at all the goop on the inside of that clear shield. Three interceptions on the year. That was his 12th tackle for loss on the season. And he's been playing all year with the injured MCL. Third down and five, blitz off the edge, but getting off the pass is Eastman, but incomplete. Ray Sean Greer could not hang on. Krasinski in there to knock it away. Well, for a brief moment, the official, now everybody's booing, the official didn't see it. They measured as a catch. That was not a catch. Now watch, there it is. Now his knee goes down and the ball goes out of bounds. The official calls it a catch and a first down. I think if you're Dave Christensen, you might want to might want to look at that one. Now Bruce Bain, as every play is looked at in college football, our replay official today up in the booth is Bruce Bain, and he will take another look at it. Over on the far side was Dave Christensen. and he didn't get that good of a look, but let's take it from the bird's eye. Now, remember the, remember the call on the field is a completion. There's the catch, the feet are down. Now his knee goes down, now the ball comes out. Now it appeared to me that I think what the official did is that he was thinking that Greer was reaching for the first down. There it is, now the feet come down. Does the ball come out? The ball doesn't come out till right then. Yeah. 
That's going to be that, that's going to be a completion. So if this all does stay, you know, they as they look at it though, they may need to look at the spot. Hard to see it from that angle, but well, I, I think and that's the reason why Greer was stretching out because he wasn't confident that he gave him the spot, but he did catch it beyond the 25. I think that was correct. And with what should stand as a tackle and a completion, Chris Przinski will move into sole possession of that eighth place all time in tackles for Wyoming. Yeah, we did. Had some problems with the microphone, but he confirmed what we already knew, which was it was a completion. So first down now for Colorado State just outside the 24. And Rayshon Greer, we mentioned Dion Morton, the struggles that he has had. Rayshon Greer is somebody that I think many anticipated was going to have a huge year after catching for over 1,100 yards in 08, but just a little over 700 this year. And again, in fairness to him, victimized by injuries and inconsistent quarterback play. Under nine minutes to play. In the battle for the bronze boot, it stayed right here in Fort Collins for three years in a row. Eastman and company trying to keep it that way. Rolling and again hooking up with his fullback, Zach Paunga. Oh, check that. That's 19. That's, that's Norman, Norman G. G, the tight end. Norman G doesn't get a lot of playing time, but now because the injury to Seymour and Pites earlier, he comes on the deep crossing route. The ball is thrown behind, does a nice job of adjusting his feet, coming back and making the catch. Now first and goal for Colorado State at the 10. And following Paunga's block, now turning north and south and lowering the helmet with a full head of steam is Leonard Mason, who really is running with some intensity. Well over 100 yards now here in the second half. I'm glad that you said that because it seems to me, at least from my vantage point, if you, if you believe in body English, that this is a guy who is really, really working hard. You can see the heel go out of bounds there at the four, and that's where they're going to mark it. But his determination, and I, I know that he took, it's obvious that he's taken it personally that he didn't get an opportunity to get in that game against New Mexico. Steve Fairchild said it was his own fault that he handed the ball one too many times on a drive and fumble by John Mosier, just ran him too much into the ground and running Mason into the ground. This time is Chris Przinski, who just keeps on adding on the tackles, was number nine in the country coming into today. He needed to stay with his friends. Watch the blocking at the point of the pack. He cuts back far too soon. There he cuts back, and there's nobody blocking. Look at all the green shirts pushing people ahead. If he stays behind his green shirts, he might be in the end zone. Brzezinski has been all over the field today, as he is typically for the Cowboys. Bunch set to the left side of the formation for Colorado State. They will try to run the end around to Morton. Morton tries to get outside, but a great open field tackle by Chris Brzezinski. Outstanding effort for the safety. And what an enormous play that is for a variety of reasons, but the most significant being that now that now Colorado State has to kick a field goal and Wyoming can go down and kick a field goal possibly to win the game. Morton gets to the outside, but just doesn't have enough speed. Playing from center field, Brzezinski is able to cut through, drop him, and now a 23-yard field goal attempt by DeLine. So the 23-yard attempt is good. And Ben DeLine has put Colorado State back on top by a score of 16 to 14. 6.57 left to go in the 101st meeting between these two schools. Yeah, just to the west of Hughes Stadium, the sun starts to set, shadows falling on a mountain. Rams used to be the Aggies, and these Wyoming Cowboys almost didn't get to five wins in San Diego against the Aztecs, trailing by a score of 27 to six in the fourth quarter. They used all kinds of special teams, a touchdown reception by Tooley, and finishing it off with a 43-yard field goal to cap a 24 run in the fourth quarter to come from behind and beat the Aztecs 
A flag down, and Wyoming will be called on one more time, trailing by 16 to 14 score here in Fort Collins today if they want to make it to win number six on the season and go bowling in Dave Christensen's first year. Holding on the return team, number 29. Luke Ruff is the guy who was victimized. First half. Uh, two flags came down, so that was pretty obvious, and that's unfortunate for Wyoming after that terrific kick return. They're going to be in poor field position. Well, not the way you wanted to start this drive as you look at Dan Hammer Schmidt and company over on that Wyoming sidelines, but from his first day on campus, Dave Christensen told us this week that he stressed fourth quarter importance. They blow an extra horn when there's just a fourth quarter to go in practice every day. Well, the fourth quarter effort of the Ram defense on that first down play as swarmed as soon as he caught the ball was David Leonard. Alex Williams led the charge. And Larry Kerr is going to have to make some interesting decisions here defensively. He has gone with an awful lot of blitzes coming in here, and he doesn't want to get caught in that situation, but he's been successful in getting to the quarterback. But of course, Wyoming's forte has been a couple of big plays in this game, and he can't afford to give them up now. With six, a little over six minutes in the clock running here in the contest. Three wides, Alvester Alexander the back, who will release out to the right side. Pressure on Carter Samuels, and he's forced to just throw it out of bounds. Oppenier was there covering their running back, Alexander. Good pressure on the quarterback there by Corey Macon coming from the left side. Forces Carter Samuels to his right, and by now everybody's aware that he is going to roll to his right. Well, good to have Corey Macon back out on the football field. He was involved in a car accident leading into last week's game, back soreness, and didn't even make the trip to Albuquerque. Can he get back there again on third down and 11 now? Empty set for the Cowboys. And this play will not get off as Wyoming Wants a timeout. That'll be their first timeout of the second half. Each team with two timeouts remaining. 5.55 left to go. Rams on top by two. Well, and two very capable return men Greenwood. back there deep. It will be the true freshman from his own four. Great coverage. Chris Brzezinski, who else is there first with the initial lick? James Carraway, the backup running back there to clean things up. I really think that that was intentional on the part of Wyoming because they wanted no part of Morton, even though Greenwood might be a step faster. You see those numbers today on Przinski. Yet again, double-digit tackle seven straight times, and now the Colorado State offense has their work cut out for them. You mentioned earlier Mitch Unrine, a little unsung. Chris Przinski quietly getting his job done and making all those double-digit tackle games as well, doing it on special teams too. And like you mentioned, Todd, a very big stop by the kick cover team, giving Eastman and the Rams a long way to go. Eastman stamps up in the pocket and will tuck this one and go. John Eastman showing you he can do it with his feet a little bit too. Big first down, a 23-yard pickup for the Rams. You go all the, way, all the way back to the first quarter. Remember when he scrambled to the right and got sacked? He didn't look like he had much mobility at all, but on that play, he was able to cut up the field, do a great job of giving some additional yards, more than 20 yards on that play. First down for Colorado State. Again, he stands in there as the Pokes rush three, connecting with Rayshon Greer. Once again, we got to tip the cap, James, to that offensive line. Look at all the time that he gets to survey the field. Nobody challenges him. He's able to cut up the field, make one man miss in the secondary, and get that additional yard. And now Colorado State just a yard short of midfield with 53 seconds remaining. Starting his first game. At the FBS level today, John Eastman and trying to go 1-0 as a starter. Goes across the middle, a little bit too high for Morton. And Rams lucky that Morton could get a finger on it. Otherwise, it's picked off and going the other way. 
You're absolutely right, James. That dig route has been popular for Colorado State. And of course, everybody knows here that this is four down territory. Eastman has plenty of time, but the ball floats on it. Gets his feet set, no problems, but definitely the ball's a little bit high, and you're right, there are two awaiting Cowboys there if Morton doesn't get a finger on it. One timeout remaining for Colorado State. Game clock sits at 48 seconds. Don't be surprised if they run the ball here, third and four. Hounger, the fullback. And just a straight drop back pass for Eastman. Eastman, if he can beat Fletcher, has a first down. Instead, Fletcher just able to get the shoelaces of the quarterback and trip him up. John Fletcher slow to get up after that tackle. What a big stop for the defensive end, though. Absolutely enormous as Fletcher as he runs out and just extends himself. Look at how he lays out. You know what? He really, I'll tell you what, sometimes you go beyond what your body can do. Or as they say with some boxers, his heart was bigger than his head. <laughs> that one had to hurt. But it was a huge play because it presented, prevented the first down. And now Colorado State had to use their last time out for this fourth and three. And it, here's one of the advantages to James of coaches on the sidelines being able to call. Eastman bounced up, and for whatever reason, he started to go like this. He was motioning his hand as if he was going to go out and spike it, not realizing he do it his fourth down. So he was lucky that Fairchild was able to call the timeout from the sidelines and get exactly what he needs here. Had Johnny on the spot, John Fletcher not been there for that stop, not only would Eastman have had Ooh, a first down, but with green. man coverage and everybody in a Wyoming jersey with their backs turned. Good point. Todd, that may have been Ben DeLine territory for a field goal. Instead, it's a fourth down and three. Fletcher is back in the ball game. One of three pokes with their hands on the turf. And it will be a four-man rush as Hendricks comes as well. And it's tipped up into the air, incomplete, intended for Yem. Picked off Wyoming football. And Matt Yem has to be absolutely brokenhearted. The native here of Fort Collins, Fort Collins High School here, as you pointed out, James, the guy who holds Great hands, steady guy, possession receiver comes over, ricochets off his chest, has a great opportunity on fourth down to come through in the clutch, is unable to do so. And as a result, the Wyoming Cowboys are going bowling. Gali Muhammad, who picked up a block punt against the Texas Longhorns earlier this year, returned it for a touchdown. And the true freshman from St. Joseph, Missouri, Caps it off. Austin Carter Samuels takes the knee. That's six wins for the Wyoming Cowboys. And in Dave Christensen's first season, just as Steve Fairchild did a year ago, Wyoming becomes bowl eligible for the first time since the Las Vegas Bowl four years ago. Prior to that, it was 1993, the last bowl trip. And the bronze boot going back north of the border. Well, it's got to be exciting for those Wyoming Cowboys because there were so many stretches, James, in this game where it appeared like Colorado State might run away with it because they seem to dominate the line of scrimmage. They seem to have a number of opportunities, but the resilience of these Cowboys, give them credit. They kept bouncing back and making plays when they needed to. And it's got that boot has got to feel pretty good after being picked ninth in the conference. Think of all those two-a-day practices. Think of all those meetings. Think of all those hours in the weight room. Think of all that time you have to spend away from friends and family, the classroom, and then you have family and friends to share it with you. Tough to beat. That's just tough to beat. That's a great, great feeling. There in the middle of the pack with his hands on the boot was Russ Arnold, who's been in the middle of that offensive line, the senior from Westminster, Colorado, junior. John Mosier will be back last year and ending the season on a nine game losing streak after going three and zero. the Colorado State Rams. The best week of practice by far the Cowboys had had all season long 
and bringing out all 10 of his bowl rings from his days, earlier coaching days, Dave Christensen, letting these guys know, not acting like, hey, it's one more football game. This is what's on the line. He told the seniors when he first came to town, I don't want you guys to be a part of something that happens in the future. I want to go to a postseason bowl game right now. And they have done that in his first season. I really respect that in a coach for this reason. So many times when a new coach comes into a program, it's always about the future, that murky future, two, three-year, four, five-year programs. His saying that said a lot about these seniors, and he could not, he was not complimentary enough, at least from his vantage point, as to what the seniors have done for Wyoming this year in terms not only of their play but of their leadership. Well, and with the short week, here we are on a Friday afternoon. Austin Carter Samuels over there with friends and family. And, and Dave Christensen told us we went right to work after that TCU loss, and we worked hard, and we worked fast. And with Dave Christensen right now is a victorious Coach Dave Christensen. Coach, you've got the bronze boot back. It's boot my first year. Isn't that good? Excellent. You also got a nice shower by the guy. I did. I'm so proud of these kids. What, what, a, what a great effort. I mean, you know, we knew it wasn't going to be easy to come down here and, and uh, get our sixth win. By the way, we're more than eligible. We're going bowling. And uh, these kids deserve it. They, they put so much into this program to, to build us from where we were, to get to where we are now. I mean, I love these kids. I wish I had that senior class for three more years. Definitely a battle for supremacy between these two teams. Yes, you mentioned it, bowl eligible. And you were not talking about eligible. You were talking about you we're are going. going. We're definitely going. Uh, finished outright fifth in the league, and a team that was picked to finish ninth. You know, it's a testament to these kids. We told them. Day one after the uh, media day that, you know, respect and credibility is earned on Saturdays. We got a little bit on a Friday today. Coach, let me tell you, you remained calm throughout this whole game. Was that tough for you to do today? I'm sick to my stomach right now. <laughs> In fact, I didn't know if I'd have enough energy to get off the field, and this boot's getting heavy. All right, Coach, congratulations. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you. So Goaling Bowling, indeed. The only four-year institution in the state. No pro team, so Wyoming folks live and die with their pokes, and now they've got a chance to see them play one more time in postseason play. Congratulations to Wyoming. Picked to finish ninth. They end up at fifth in the Mountain West Conference with a 17-16 victory over Colorado State today. Hey, tomorrow we've got a triple header on the mountain. It's New Mexico at TCU at 11, followed by Utah at BYU at 3, and San Diego State and U UNLV will wrap things up. For Roger Bailey and Natalie Vickers and Todd Christensen, I'm James Bates. Post Game Live's coming at you next. This has been a production of The Mountain. So long from Fort Collins, Colorado, everybody. We'll see you next time.